So part of becoming a Jedi is building and constructing your own lightsaber with which to fight the forces of darkness. Mm -hmm. How do we go about starting that process? Starting that process? It yeah. depends on exactly what you want to do. I really like the look of the, just the classic, simple lightsabers from the original episodes. I like it because I know the original movies were all very much DIY. It was done with found objects. They went out and bought raw materials, bought scrap materials, and built their own stuff. So it's windshield wiper blades, it's, it's O-rings, it's plumbing part, it's just extruded aluminum tubing just existing things. So I'm just gonna you know, walk you through that. I'm stoked, let's get started. Excellent. So what I have is a couple pieces of aluminum tubing. This is the tubing I wanna use for the hilt. The main piece I'm gonna use is this thick walled. This is an inch and a quarter in diameter. Okay. And there's one inch on in the interior diameter because that's the same size of the polycarbonate tubing we're actually gonna use for the blade. So it'll just fit right inside and we okay. can screw it and hold it in place. Excellent. To add a little more detail to the outside, this is just a piece of one and three eighths. So it's one and a quarter inside diameter. So the two of them fit together. Okay, and what's the purpose of and that? The purpose of this is to make it a little bit wider at the bottom so it's a little more comfortable to hold, and it's the beginning of personalizing your actual uh, hilt. Okay. What I want to do is cut a small piece off the front, uh -huh. and we'll put that on first, and then a couple of uh, O-rings, the same stuff you use for plumbing, uh -huh. and then I'll put the, re the remainder of this on behind it with some windshield wiper blades for a grip, and uh, it just adds detail, it adds character. It's very much the way Vader's saber was originally built, and it's just a comfort and aesthetics. Yeah, I like it. And due to my powers of deduction, I'm going to say that this is going to be our blade? Correct. Okay. This this is a one inch polycarbonate tubing. And uh, specifically polycarbonate, this is the same type of plastic that your safety glasses are made out of. Oh, excellent. Great. This so is actually uh, very similar in strength to steel. Really? Mm -hmm. So for me and my fellow Jedi that didn't take shop in high school, could I just search this on the internet and find a, a supplier? Yep, one inch polycarbonate tubing. It'll come right up. So we're gonna go ahead and cut our tubes. Okay. Now I've looked at the other hilts of the sabers. They all seem to be about 11 inches, maybe 12 inches long. Go ahead and figure 11 inches isn't gonna be a good size. Okay. We'll go ahead and cut about five, five inches, inches here. Off. Okay. And that'll hold the blade and uh, give a stop for the electronics. So we'll make a five inch cut and that's all we're gonna be using this piece for. Okay. It'll be very slow and steady. Mission accomplished, look at right. that. Great. We're gonna fit the two of them together. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to do was make a cut on this one, making a small piece for decorative purposes, and then the rest of the handle will go underneath it. Okay. Part of the personality of the saber is how the actual emitter is. The emitter is where the blade comes out of. And there's all sorts of different types. You can do, you can put little funnels on the end of it. You can put like a ring around the end of it. A simple thing to do is just to do a 45 degree or 30 degree cut to the end of it. Okay. Do you like to do that? Absolutely. Okay. Take some double back tape, stick this down to a piece of wood. We can then cut through it and everything will stay kind of connected. Just uh, put the aluminum tubing square against the fence and then press down with a double sided tape so it all sticks. That was the only reason I put the double back tape on, was just to try to make that cut as safe as I could. And you did a great job. Thank you. Very clean. And now that we've made the cuts, on, on all of these, the edges are actually kind of sharp, and you can, you, can, you can feel that, especially on the inside, you get these little burrs. Okay. So I've got a sanding block and I'm reboard. Okay. And all we want to do is, uh, especially on this one, we're really going to want to round this off a little bit. Okay. Focus on the inside, because we want to scratch the plastic up too much. Okay. So to remove the writing, mm -hmm. we either use a solvent or we just sand it off. Okay. And with the sanding, you know, it comes right off. Wow, that went, that was gone in a second. But you can see that it starts to polish it up a little bit. Now the blade can vary in length a little bit. Yoda's was only 32 inches. Most of the others seem to be about 39 inches. A lot of things I read online say 36, on down to 24. Mm -hmm. So They're, it's really up to you. It's really up to you. Okay. And since it's kind of up to you, what would you like? I'd like a standard level one blade. Level one blade. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and do a, say, uh, 36. Okay. Okay. So I don't want to just cut it 36, because if I want to have 36 inches exposed, I have to be able to put some inside. Right. 37 would probably be good. So one to two inches give. One to two inches give. Beyond what you want. Beyond what you want. Okay. So you have something to actually put into it. Got it. Something kind of like that. Uh -huh. So there's kind of the beginning of a lightsaber. Wow. What we want to do next is go ahead and drill this out and tap it so we can put screws in it. Okay. One thing I want to do first is add some five minute epoxy. That'll add some strength all the way around it and the screw will just really make it secure. Excellent. 
So this is just a two part, five minute epoxy. All I want to do is put about an inch or so into this. Okay. So I'm going to put just a little bit on the bottom. And it, but it doesn't need to be exact? It doesn't need to be exact. Okay. And I'm putting just a little bit on the bottom because when I put them together, it's going to smear it. Okay. So you say I got a lot of the- The excess coming out? The excess out. coming out, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just wipe it off. So we got it set in, and while it's setting up, we'll go ahead and start putting some of the O-rings on. Okay. And then we can mix up some more epoxy and glue the second ring on top of it. Great. I was thinking we could do three. So what I want to do is we're going to use a drill press. And the idea with this is this particular drill bit is the right size to put in an 832 screw. Then we can come back with a tap, which is a fancy drill bit, to actually put the threads into the pipe the screw will grip to. Okay, great. Okay. What I want to do is I've got the device set up to help hold it in place for us. So yeah, turn it on. And slow and steady wins the race. Got it. Boom goes the dynamite. This is a heat sink out of uh, electronics. This came out of a power supply. Okay. This could theoretically be the housing for the crystal for the saver. Okay. What I wanted to do was attach this to the top. We'll just put a set screw, the thing that holds the blade in place, all the way through this and all the way through the hilt in order to hold the blade and hold this in place. And then later on, we'll actually put epoxy on it as well. Artistically speaking, this is where we want it to go. Mm -hmm. And when this comes down, it'll go through the hole that we've already got. What we want to do now is go ahead and tap out the holes that we drilled. And to do that, we use a tap, which is a specialized drill bit. The tap has got the, the threads built in and is able to chew and make the thread pattern inside the hole. Okay. So into each one? So to each one. <sighs> All right. What we want to do is take the set screws and put those in the bottom. And then you just thread that right in there. And go ahead and screw it all the way in until the top is flush with the saber. Okay. So that way, if you look inside, they kind of come through a little mm -hmm. bit and the blade will, will actually hit that and stop. Okay. And that'll keep it free from actually hitting the optics, uh, meaning the, the LED when we put it in there. Okay. So to clean this up, it's a nail buffer. Okay. As it cleans off, you can get a really good chrome shine out of it too. Yeah. So that was part of the aesthetic I was thinking, okay. of having this be a little more shiny than, than the rest. Yeah, I love that. To complete the hilt, we're gonna put the grips on it. And just like the original savers, I'm gonna use windshield wiper blades. Okay. And I just pulled the windshield wiper blades off my truck because it's time to change them anyway. <laughs> now we can use out of the actual blade on the bottom, but that's really thin. So I thought if we had just used this side instead, which is also rubber, it would actually uh, have a better look. Okay, great. Now the, these are a little wider than the originals, but it'll work. So all I wanna get off is this back piece. So we're just peeling them off right now. Just peeling them off right now. Okay. We could try actually just cutting them down and making them lower. I also have a piece that I want to put on the bottom to help hold the speaker in. Okay. And what I had picked up was an in-sync strainer. <laughs> this is one and three eighths. You just drop it in your sink. And then this rubber grommet, this, this is a, a piece for your garbage disposal. Those two things fit together. This is the speaker and battery unit all in one. Just mm -hmm. the speaker down here, put our double A's, triple A's here. And then, uh, so that'll be epoxy to keep that in place. So one final round of epoxy. Just make sure it's as straight as you can be, up and down. Now it's not super glue, so it doesn't just stick and gotcha. hold. Gotcha, so you have to hold it for a little while. Do, or we can put some blue tape on it. Oh, let's do that. Alrighty. And set it down okay. to where it feels like it wants to go. Yep. Just set that in there as centered as you can be. So, we'll let all that set up. Okay. And we can start putting the electronics together. Wonderful. Yeah. This is my soundboard. This has uh, all the same type of gizmos your cell phone does to know how it's moved, so it can tell when you're swinging the saber around. Mm -hmm. This is the little driver unit. This helps regulate the power coming from the uh, from the battery to the LEDs. Uh, the big benefit of this is as your uh, batteries are losing power, the LED gets a consistent amount of power and it remains a bright glow. Now, where did you get these at? This I got uh, online okay. from uh, from an LED supply. And uh, this was a custom made board. So you didn't make this on your own, someone made this? Someone made this. Okay. Yeah, and there are multiple styles of boards available. This just happens to be the one that I picked up. What would you search for? I would search for a lightsaber soundboard. Okay. So, 
Searching online, I found a wiring diagram. Okay. So this will help me actually set the board up because each wire does something specific. What should we start soldering first? Let's solder the battery leads on and then we can solder the speaker on because that's all one unit. Now, how do I heat it up? You just touch it with the tip. With the tip? Yeah, and then you're actually adding solder to the wire. Tubing over it. Okay. I can feel the solders in the center. Uh huh. And then the heat gun. You just bring that up. Apply a little bit of heat to the to the shrink tubing, and it shrinks down and creates a seal, keeps it from shorting itself okay. out. This is the the super bright LED that we're going to use. This is actually a blue LED. Okay. And. On the sides, you see it has uh, little squares mm -hmm. marked positive and negative, and there's two of them on there. Mm -hmm. We only have to use one side. Okay. And we're just going to put a little bit of solder on the, on the wire and set it in place and make a positive and negative connection. Now, since I'm doing this myself as a DIY and I'm not getting super specialized parts to begin with, there's two different LEDs, right? Mm -hmm. One that causes the beam glow and then another LED that causes the flash. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and stack the two LEDs next to each other. Okay. But the star is a little too big, so I need to cut one side off. So you can take the wire cutters, because all this is is a little piece of aluminum mm -hmm. with a printed circuit board on top. Okay. And as long as I only cut off one half, we'll be able to connect to the other half and the light should still light up. Okay. So I'm trying to get it in one motion as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And getting as kind of close to the LED mm -hmm. as I can, but I don't want to be right up against it. I'm, I'm, I am actually a little concerned about unseating the LED. Okay. I have a secondary battery here, so we can test it to make sure it still works. Get in there. Oh, there you go. Hey, good, that lit up. Now, all this spaghetti mess of wires we need to put inside of our lightsaber hill. Okay. But it's going to be a bit of a challenge, a bit of a, bit of a ship in a bottle. Okay. If we cut it in half, we can put all the lights on one side, we can have the, the batteries on the other side a little bit easier. And then to hide it or accentuate it, whichever way we look at it, we can add more of the O rings to it. Okay. Which will also give you a little more of a grip up here. Yeah, that's great. So we want the button to go here. So I'm gonna drill a pilot hole with this size, and then I'll trade out bits and use the other one to drill the bigger hole. And I made a notch so it'll come back apart, even with the activation switch in place. There we go. So I'm gonna take the guts, and I'm gonna feed the guts through what's gonna become the battery compartment. So everything's gonna come on through first. And we have the two open wires. Mm -hmm. That's actually for the switch. Is that both of them? Yeah. Shove stuff into other Shove stuff. Shove stuff into other stuff. We have to put a heat sink in the back of this because when it's on for a prolonged period of time, these it'll get real hot. It's really hot. Yeah. They're really bright, they get really hot. And then for a heat sink, all we need is a piece of metal that can absorb the heat and take it away from. So you don't need to put it on the back of that guy? No, because this one isn't on as long. This is just flashes on and off and it's done. Okay. I'll set this on here. Okay. So I want to put hot glue and I'll hold it in place. I don't believe the LED will ever warm up enough to melt the hot glue. Just do a little bit on the side there. Okay. So I can actually stack it real good. Stack it real good and have them uh, both face up towards the blade. Okay. We have a lens to put on this to help focus it because, you know, it's not bright enough all on its own. Okay. Now, this is designed to fit on one LED. I've got two, so I'm going to cut a couple of uh, the legs off. Okay. And we're just going to hot glue it in place. So just give me some hot glue across the bottom and across the top. Okay. I want to make sure the focal point of the, uh, of the lens is over the blue because that's what actually makes the blade glow and be all happy. Okay. Like that, right? I do, yes. All righty. Yes. Now, we'll need to epoxy this. We're just going to want to put it all on the top up here. Okay. Five minute epoxy. Let that set up. Five minute dance party? Five minute dance party. Or what we could do is make a blade. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All this is is the pure, clear cellophane. Same stuff you'd wrap up floral arrangements or an Easter basket. Okay. With. 
Now what we want to do is just roll this out to be the same length that the tube is. Okay. All right, so about there, huh? Just kind of eyeballing it. I might be a little bit off, but that's okay. Now, the easiest way to do this is with a wooden dowel. You just take a wooden dowel, set it down on the side, and you roll this up on a wooden dowel. Okay. So now that we got the cellophane wrapped up onto the dowel, we can insert it into the tube. Then you just unwind it, and the cellophane will stick to the inside, allowing us to take the dowel back out. All right. Great. Now we have what is the, the diffusion inside. This is gonna help refract the light and light up the whole blade. Okay. We're gonna put a tip on the end of it because you don't want to hit anybody with this sharp corner, right? Mm -hmm. Plus it's 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 a little rounded, so it's a little prettier. Mm -hmm. One other detail I want to do, I have heater tape. This is actually aluminum foil tape. You use it for, for heating, ducting heating inside of your house. Okay. So I'm going to just adhere this to it. What I have to glue this onto the uh, polycarbonate is a solvent it won't adhere to the aluminum. So what I need to do is actually cut a ring open all the way around mm -hmm. so I can have plastic against plastic. Got it. And all I'm trying to do with this, the whole reason for putting this is like having a mirror on the end. So when the light comes through, it doesn't just keep shining on out like a flashlight. Mm -hmm. It'll reflect back and it helps keep the upper portion of the lightsaber lit brighter. Got it. I'm gonna hold this up vertical. Okay. We're just gonna balance this on the top of it because we're gonna use what's called capillary action. Capillary action is when fluids want to travel between two things that are really close to each other. Since it's water thin, that's what it wants to do. Mm -hmm. To use this type of an applicator, which is a little tiny syringe like needle on the end, I'm actually gonna squeeze some of the air out of it. That way I can tip it over and let it inhale and it doesn't, it doesn't come out. Okay. And I get it close to where I want it to go. Squeeze it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think Our it's been long enough. Done, yeah. Just set that in, push it down as far as it wants to go. Mm -hmm. That's got the thumb screw. Put that on as tight as you can. Okay. It won't go all the way okay. down. And then we have our other hidden one in here. Look at that. So if you wanted to build a blade just like this one, it's gonna run about $200. But most of that is actually the soundboard. So if you take that out and you just have a blade that lights up, you run up and beat your friends with, you're looking at about a $50 bill. Wow. Awesome. My very first lightsaber. Your very first lightsaber. I'm Where ready to go? go complete my Jedi training. Yes, you are. And may the Force be with you. And with you, Odin Wan Kenobi. <laughs>